Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. This one's especial for Ensign Expandable. He just loves slaying those dinosaurs in the mighty, mighty Fraser River. Sturgeon fishing, and you need proper skookum gear, but for reeling in those hundreds of pound monsters. So we'll have a look at this now. I'm not that familiar with uh, the fishing. However, I recognize Chinesium when I see it. So we'll have a look at this and see just how much Chinesium is contained therein. Now this is a drag reel for 80 pound, yeah it'll take 80 pound test. So 80 pounds of pull on, on your fishing rod is a fair bit. It, you, you ain't fishing for bass, you know what I'm saying? So this, we can see here, it locks up in the one direction and then we can adjust the drag on how much it takes. Pull, straight line pull for the fish to let out some uh, some line and we also have this quick adjustment so we're on the drag and then we can ratchet it up so it's harder and harder and harder until it's full on uh, full chooch and that is just a little locking mechanism that locks oh yeah okay so that's a locking mechanism for this nut and it's just a little plastic chintzy plastic locking mechanism but it doesn't matter because we're just all we're using that for is to make sure that this nut doesn't back off right as your mid stroke. Okay, so lots of lots of lube there. So that is the shaft. What uh, is the input? And then see if we can get in there. Maybe we'll back that one off. See if that backs all the way off. On threads, that's some spring and sprung and spring and spring. Okay, so that's the preload. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so that's the preload for the drag brake there. Oh, you can see we got disc springs, Belleville washers, and these are seriesed up so that if we had them parallel, if we had them like this, they would double the clamping force, but we have them seriesed like this, so that that extends our that extends our travel, so we get more fine adjustment that way. We got four of those Belleville spring washers. They appear to be stainless steel, not stainless steel, just raw steel. So that is a one-way clutch of some sort. You can see the ramps are one way. They catch, they'll catch one way and and uh, release another way. See if we can get this off now. We'll just leave that. Maybe that pulls off. Oh, and that's through. That's through. So let's start pulling some of these little flathead fasteners off. Now, flathead pain right in the cunning linguals. Should have gone out with the Ford Model T. But they're still using them here in this pen. Here are the screws, all flathead. The, which is terrible. I mean, torques, torques, come on, at the very least. But stainless steel, mildly stainless steel 304, something like that, fasteners, which means that uh, over time, these would definitely corrode inside of the aluminium. And there is, there appears to be some in plastic and some in another metal, very likely aluminium. That means that this guy and this guy are going to be froze cock stiff in there if, if and you use it and ever try and get it out. And then you'll strip this right out because it's flathead. So that's kind of a pain right in the cant. Um, not super impressed with that. We'll see what goodies are in here. Oh yeah, okay. So nice metal gears. Uh, centered powdered metal gears. What these guys do. Some sort of strike. Strike, what the fuck does that do? Hmm. Just a bronze bush and, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see the machining there, terrible machining on the bronze bush. Worn, it's cocked right over to one side there. So that would have been a tube and then machined into a round, but uh, machined off center. Uh, terrible. This is all turned. 
So this would all be machined. So that's interesting. That is not going to be centered uh, metal gear. Nice to see, but probably not hardened. Let's have a wee boo here. Yeah, soft, not hardened. And there's the shaft, the input shaft, very cheap part, not ground. It's just been turned on the lathe and then vibratory finished even on that, uh, even on that bearing surface. So yeah, quite, quite crappily made there. Uh, you'd expect to see maybe a ground finish and then a proper oil light bushing. Although there is, you know, considering you're doing it with your hand. There is quite a bit of meat there. Here you look at that quarter inch and uh, three sixteenths. It'd take you quite a while to wear that out, especially with a decent grease in there. What we'll do is we'll upgrade this. We'll take this. This is very likely. I, if I had to guess, I I would say it's um, Am's oil or Unirex uh, anti anti water fouling kind of grease you know anti anti wipe off in the rain kind of grease so we're going to go ahead and change that uh, put molybdenum disulfide paste in there here are the dogs and the poles interesting feature here because these kind of weeble wobble around on the shaft where they wherever the hell they want what they've done is they've put some copper guides to keep them in line so that it can actually catch on those and it's double pawled you can see if we get out too far though it pops off so what I'm not quite sure exactly what this strike plate does there's a detent and you can move it over and that goes there but I don't see what it actuates on let's see if we can get that off there that one comes off and then that one it's going to be a pain in the ass to get back on. Unscrew left hand thread. Uh, <laughs> here's the side what's all show and no go. This is the side uh, what makes the noise. Here's a chain sprag type looking gear. And that just actuates on this little clacker here. Just to give you some tactile and, and auditory feedback. And as far as this strike whatever the fuck this strike thing does it doesn't seem to do much it just goes in and out it doesn't actuate on anything in particular it's detented i'm not quite sure what exactly it's supposed to do I'm gonna i think i'll have to defer to this experts here here we'll get into the brake this is the claim to fame it is very smooth no stiction but it could be just a friction material right full of grease <laughs> which would which would make it very nicely smooth and no stiction at all so that is the shaft of Rooney what gets pulled through I think we got to do something more like that that's a little bit better shaft than the other one than the input shaft uh, a lot nicer machining on that I'll pull that out so here's the automotive clutch material it appears to be some sort of phenolic resin impregnated fiberglass super high tech <laughs> and a stainless steel uh, brake disc not blanchard ground but ground around the OD on the face there and this looked like plastic but I had a go at her with the, the file and it's actually gray anodized aluminium so that uh, would be die cast in order to, to hit that. And then there's a little tiny bearing in there. These are kind of goofy arrangements. These uh, bull rings. You see that? Just a bull ring. Of course, the problem with the bull ring is it wants to pop out all the time because it's round. It's a round cross section instead of a square cross section. And it's just hitting on the very, very nibs. So I would bet you given enough persuasion it would pop right out uh yeah i'm wrong okay but it is weeble wobbling in there a little bit which probably isn't too great for feel because 
this needs to engage in order you know the fish starts to fuck right off on you you don't want this moving back and forth i wonder if you can hear that when the when the fish takes off on you and here's that's just a uh that's just a steel plate that's been punched pressed soft 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 so nothing in here is hardened steel um, there is some you know some mitigation for corrosion just material selection wise these um yeah i don't know those bull rings are kind of goofy but there you have it not much to it really this okay this bobbin is so this bobbin is uh anodized aluminium expensive uh, multiple color anodized so multi multi-process but that's part of the uh you know, uh, <laughs> Pontiac Fiero is a sports car, right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So these, uh, I don't know. The whole body of the thing, what takes all the pressure is nylon. Glass fiber reinforced nylon appears to be. But every, yeah, it sure is. But then you got these goofy kind of valences on there. Eh, eh. I would bet, if I had to guess, retails for 150 bucks. I got on the old gargle with the jazz hands routine to fill the gaps in my application knowledge. Again, I don't own a boat. A boat is a, a hole in the water in which to throw your money. Boat break out another thousand anytime there's a problem. So I uh, I go on my buddy's boat and he provides all this stuff. So he decided to buy some new stuff and wanted me to have a look at it prior to see if there was any kind of upgrades or if this was indeed the best one going or you know you know all the marketing like so uh learned a couple of things learned a few things here these guys they're not called strike uh even though they're in the strike zone these are actually for old men so you you stick these into a harness so uh, this is kind of clever because they're out of the way now that it's actually reasonably skookum, so that's a good thing. And you know, you are handling this, so if this is sticking up all the time, eh, you know, you sort of, well, you sort of handling it, I guess. Not too, too much. And then this guy actually has an adjustamente, and that provides more or less uh, clickety clack when you're coming around. So here it's completely disengaged. Let me see if I can get that in there. And here move that in further let me see if i can sort of show you what's going on here we'll put that to one and we'll put that to two and you can hear it more i i other than just hearing it i don't see really what it does it just shows you well maybe impresses the ladies or something who knows so for the money hundred and probably 200 bucks Canadian uh, you know everything's plastic on it anything that matters is plastic they I think the, the marketing link calls it graphite but it ain't graphite it's it appears to be to my uh, layman's eye it appears to be a PA6 30% uh, glass fiber reinforced nylon all of the components of course stainless steel just my stainless steel 304 Nothing special. These bull rings don't like that. The grease, it's special pen grease. You tell me if you see any difference at all here. And that stuff. Now this is pricey grease and it does, uh, it is very water resistant. Now according to the marketing wank tears, the bearings are all allegedly stainless steel shielded bearings. Now why you would need stainless steel bearings when they're loaded full of grease uh i have no idea uh, recall though none of these are user serviceable really you know your typical fisherman you're gonna have this all a part rebuilder every season i i i strongly doubt it however i i've been wrong before one thing i will do some upgrades i will do we're gonna go with molybdenum disulfide grease we're also going to put a little blue Loctite on the fasteners. Or some Never Sneeze. I haven't quite decided yet. 
either or just to kind of seal in the threaded holes the fine machinery threaded holes so that we don't get oh okay so that's nice on the back side there we got a little just a wee little thrust bearing and then a wave spring in behind there and that goes like so that goes like so and that is a shielded bearing it does there we go there's the shielded bearing there and where's the magnet here we'll see oh sure doesn't sure doesn't act like stainless steel sure doesn't act like stainless steel there you go we got the gift of what keeps on giving a basket case for christmas time at ensign expandables the only way to really test this is to see if she slays some fish on the mighty mighty fraser is uh, is it skookum it ain't skookum is it chintzy it's got some chintzy bits but overall she's you know it's fairly stout wow thanks for watching keep your dick in a voice oh ye of little faith of course i got her back together only took but the three tries as well you gotta know it alls are people too they need a chance to pat themselves on the back.